It was a lazy Sunday morning in 1941. While Honolulu was still rubbing the sleep out of her eyes and reaching for a second cup of coffee, 183 Japanese warplanes dipped down and spread out. The time was 7.55. The Japanese plan was meticulous and systematic. First, crush American air power before it could get off the ground. Then cripple the striking capability of the Pacific Fleet. At six minutes after eight, it happened. An armor-piercing bomb crashed through the deck of the USS Arizona, penetrating the forward munitions magazine, ripping the ship apart. In nine minutes, the Arizona and most of her crew were on the bottom. 9 a.m., and a second wave of Japanese planes screamed in. Their objective, to finish off any remaining battleships and aircraft capable of retaliating against Admiral Yamamoto's fleet at sea. By 10 a.m., it was over. 21 American vessels had been sunk or seriously damaged. 188 planes destroyed. 49 civilians and 2,341 servicemen were dead and another 1,158 wounded. The unthinkable had happened. Japan had dealt U.S. air and sea power in the Pacific a staggering blow. Yesterday, December 7th, 1941, a date which will live in infamy, the United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by naval and air forces of the Empire of Japan. America was at war. Remember Pearl Harbor became the rallying cry that would galvanize the country's commitment to winning World War II, and in so doing, change the course of our nation's history and the future of the world. Today, Pearl Harbor Memorial is the centerpiece of the National Park Service's new and expanded World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument that includes the USS Oklahoma and USS Utah memorials as well. With over 1.5 million guests a year, it's Hawaii's number one visitor destination. Once inside the visitor center, go straight to the ticket booth, free, time-specific passes for the USS Arizona Memorial Tours are distributed on a first-come, first-served basis. Next stop, the audio tour booth. Though not strictly necessary, this self-guided walkabout is by far the best way to experience all the National Monument has to offer, and it's well worth the small fee. Okay, time to start roaming. First stop, the two new museums, Walk in, and you're enveloped in the sights and sounds of another time. Spies and code-breaking machines. A new gizmo called radar. Torpedo bombers. Mighty ships. And people. More than anything, the people. Here, war assumes a very personal face. Battles, it seems, are fought and home fronts defended by everyday people caught up in extraordinary circumstances. Over in a corner, a child listens intently as an elderly veteran tells his story. For her, valor, honor, and hope now have a name. And isn't that what makes Pearl Harbor so extraordinary? On any given day, walk through the visitor center and speak with living, breathing history. The most exciting aspect of this, this monument is that we still have our Pearl Harbor survivors and our civilian witnesses of this attack and this war with us today. So now is the time to honor them. Now is the time to talk with them. And we have Pearl Harbor survivors and witnesses that work right here at this monument. So to come to the park and shake their hand and tell them thank you is a moment that will, will be with us now and will pass very, very soon. Along the waterfront stand a series of wayside exhibits. Look up to see Pearl Harbor today 
look down to see the exact same view as it was in 1941. Up ahead, Remembrance Circle pays individual tribute to the men, women, and children who were killed as a result of the attack. If you've noticed more than a few people in uniform strolling around, well, there's a reason for that. World War II Valor in the Pacific National Monument is in the middle of an active naval installation, Joint Base Pearl Harbor Hickam. The visitor center here in Pearl Harbor continues to function as a place where they do get their uh, promotions. It's not in very many tourist destinations that you see sailors walking around in their dress whites, but they're here, they're part of the, this experience. With so much to see and do, why not plan the rest of your afternoon? Tickets for the Battleship Missouri and Pacific Aviation Museum Pearl Harbor can be purchased dead ahead at the USS Bowfin, one of only 15 World War II submarines still in existence today. Go below decks of this famous sub and you'll have a new respect for the silent service. It's hard to imagine an 80-man crew living, working, and fighting in such a small space. The Bowfin has been fully restored and is filled with fascinating artifacts. Plan on spending at least an hour here. In the 1940s, submarine duty was particularly dangerous business. More than 20% never returned home. Right next door, the Waterfront Memorial honors submariners and their boats lost in action. If the Second World War began for America with the attack on Pearl Harbor, it ended here on the deck of the 58,000-ton battleship Missouri with the signing of the Japanese surrender. Her 16-inch guns, each 65 feet long and weighing 116 tons, could accurately fire a 2,700-pound shell some 23 miles in 50 seconds you'll want to plan on spending at least two hours exploring. Also on historic Ford Island, a short shuttle ride away from the visitor center, is what TripAdvisor rates as one of America's top 10 aviation attractions, Pacific Aviation Museum, Pearl Harbor. Japanese Zeros, P-40 Warhawks, a B-25 Mitchell, here you can get nose to nose with 26 historic aircraft. Try your hand at an aircraft control simulator and experience the story of military aviation in the Pacific. Now, time to head back to the theater. The 23 minute film will explain global events leading up to the attack and show footage of the raid taken as it was happening. Then, it's just a short trip by Navy launch to the somber white icon that is the actual memorial. Walk up the gangway and into the entry room. Here on either side are the flags of the nine states for which the eight great battleships and the USS Utah were named. Move forward to the assembly room and the panorama opens up. Boys mark the length of the sunken ship. Oil still escaping after 70 years, leaves a rainbow sheen on water lapping against rusted gun turrets. Looking down, fish swim across what was once a galley. Then there it is, that great solemn wall filled with names of the fallen, American heroes etched in stone. There's a, 1177 names on that wall and I like to pick one of those names. It's always a different name. And I think about that, um, that young man's life and what the impact of his loss was on that day um, to his family, um, to his friends, to his community. As if by common agreement, whispers replace conversation. This is hallowed ground. Standing here in the face of so much loss, you get it. This is what war does, and it is impossibly tragic. What we hope visitors walk away with is an understanding of war and hopefully a dedication to preventing it.
Sobering thoughts to contemplate while on vacation? Maybe not. Since the founding of this country, each generation has borne witness to events that would transform us as Americans. None more decisively than what happened right here on the island of Oahu. If it's true that history cannot be unlived, then maybe, armed with knowledge and compassion, it need not be lived again.